Mad, mad, it's all about math, mad, mad, wonderful world of math. Welcome to the wonderful world of math, trigonometry style. Today we want to do trigonometric equations, equations where there is an unknown inside a trig function. So for the trig equations we want to do today, uh, there are two kinds of problems, two ways they can ask us. You can also think of it as two steps. Um, number one, find all solutions in the interval 0 to 2 pi, or if we're using degrees, 0 to 360 degrees. Um, and I could also instead say find all solutions, in which case this is your solid first step. So let's take a look at our first example. Find all solutions of cosine theta equals 0. Find all the angles theta for which cosine is equal to 0. So we start by finding where is cosine equal to 0 between 0 and 2 pi, right? Uh, now, if you remember the graph of cosine, looks like this. Uh, we had a couple of really important points. Of course, when it starts over, back up at the top, it's 2 pi. Halfway in between there, it's at the minimum, pi. And halfway in between the beginning and the end, um, and then halfway between this and this, halfway between the middle and the beginning, is this inflection point, the x-intercept. And we have another x-intercept halfway between the middle and the end. These five points were the big deal, right? Right. Check. So you'll notice that these right here are x values, values for theta, the input, where the y value is 0. So we know that if theta equals pi halves, then cosine of theta will be 0. We also know that if theta equals 3 pi over 2, then cosine will be 0. These are all the solutions in the interval 0 to 2 pi. But because cosine is periodic, because it repeats itself after 2 pi, any angle I take, or any theta value I take, that is plus a multiple of 2 pi, like for example, pi over 2 plus 2 pi itself, or pi over 2 plus 4 pi, pi over 2 plus 6 pi. All of these things are going to be solutions also. So we're going to take this one angle, this quadrantal angle here, we're going to say this angle plus every angle coterminal to it. So that means plus 2 pi k for any integer k is also a solution. But we'll also say 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k for any k that is an element of the set of integers. So that these two expressions for any integer k represent all of the solutions. Here are the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, and these represent all of the solutions. Now say that I want you to name, based on this, six specific solutions of this equation. We already know two of them, right? We know pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. We just need to name four more. So let's, let's think about that. We've got pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. What does this k stuff mean? It means that if I pick any integer k and plug it into this equation, I get another solution. So let's pick some integers k. If k equals 0, then this is 2 pi times 0. That's just 0, and you end up with pi halves plus 0. We already got that one. This is when k is 0. What about if k equals 1? If I pick the integer 1, 2 pi times 1 would be 2 pi so that this sum would become pi halves plus 2 pi. You want to get a common denominator, so you take 2 pi and you multiply the top and the bottom by... Oh, it doesn't look like it has a bottom. Oh wait, what's that? It has an invisible 1 for a denominator. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2 over 2, so that I result with something here. I result, that's a weird verb. I end up with something here that has a denominator 2 that's equivalent to 2 pi, 4 pi over 2, and this is 5 pi over 2. 
this is when k equals 1, 5 pi over 2. Well, I have two lists here, right? Two expressions. And I can take this one when k equals 0. Oh, wait, that's this one. When k equals 1, I can do that here too. So k equals 1, 3 pi over 2, plus 2 pi. Now we already know that 2 pi is equivalent to 4 pi over 2. We did the work last time. So when we add these two fractions, we end up with 7 pi over 2. So now I have four solutions. Uh, what if k equals 2? Or if you wanted to go in that direction instead, instead of going around 360 and then another 360 degrees, what if we went backwards 360 degrees from each of these? I recommend that you guys pause this and try to figure out what solutions correspond to these two integer values for k. Okay, so coming back in three, two, one, here we are. We've got more solutions. So 9 pi over 2 and 11 pi over 2. And actually back here we have negative pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over 2. All of these things. And of course the list keeps going. Um, I only asked for 6 at this time, so you feel free to give me any 6 of these 8 or different ones if you feel like. You could pick different k's. You could pick weird k's. Pick 47. It's going to give you a solution. One thing that I want us to be able to do is, is to, to be able to pick k's. It doesn't matter which integer you pick. If I just ask for six solutions, you, you just pick some k's. We need to be able to figure out what this means. It means this list that goes on forever in both directions, where all the things are, um, well, these two are pi, two pi units apart. The other thing I wanted us to notice is that because of the way cosine works, because we picked quadrantal angles to start with, uh, that they weren't actually in a quadrant, that they were on the axes. I want you to notice that I don't just have to think about these two guys being 2 pi apart and these guys being 2 pi apart and them being separate. Look at the difference between these two and these two. Because we started with quadrantal angles, it turns out that every solution is a multiple of 1 pi apart. These guys are only pi units apart. I actually don't need two separate expressions for this particular problem because we started with this quadrantal angle. All I really need is one list, one expression, plus any integer multiple of 1 pi. Because they were quadrantal and turned out that these guys were pi units apart. And there we go. We did what we set out to do, and we did a little more. Let's take the next example. Find all solutions of sine of omega uh, equals negative radical 3 over 2. So, first of all, we want to say, where is sine negative? Which quadrants? So we're going to have two quadrants for this. We're going to have sine negative in quadrant 3, and we're going to have sine negative in quadrant 4. So where is it negative? And then where do we have radical 3 over 2? What, Which angle in the first quadrant makes sine equal to radical 3 over 2? And it's going to be pi over 3. So we say omega is going to have the reference angle pi over 3. Um, what angle in the third quadrant does that? If you remember reference angles, we're looking at somebody in the third quadrant that looks like this, that we'll call omega, and we have a reference angle equal to pi over 3. Remember the reference angle is the positive acute angle, so positive, counterclockwise, acute, meaning n not this guy. See that this is not acute, it's obtuse. Positive acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of our angle. This is the reference angle. Now what do you notice about this and the reference angle? You should notice that this is 180 degrees, pi radians, and then the purple stuff all together will make omega. So again, pi plus the purple stuff, pi over 3, is omega, right? This and the purple stuff together make up this guy. Okay, that's omega. 
And all we have to do is get a common denominator and add those things. So that's 3 pi over 3 plus 1 pi over 3. Blech. 1 pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3. This is the angle in the fourth quadrant whose reference angle is pi over 3. So now we need somebody in the fourth quadrant that does this. So for the fourth quadrant, finding reference angles is about 2 pi. We know that the reference angle is this guy, positive and acute. So that means in the counterclockwise direction. Uh, between the terminal side and the, uh, the x-axis, in this case, the, the nearer x-axis is the positive x-axis. In this case, the nearer x-axis was the negative x-axis. It's always the nearest x-axis so that this angle is acute. Notice that these two guys together make one full revolution. So omega in this quadrant plus pi over 3 equals 2 pi. Solve for omega. So 5 pi over 3. Uh, we went over this not just to figure out what those were, because really at this point in the class you should know those. If you don't go back and study them, uh, you should know those sort of by heart. But because we're going to have to do the stuff for angles that we're less comfortable with in the near future, and I wanted to make sure that we had an idea how to do this. In general, the reference angle was denoted by the angle's name prime. So if the regular angle was theta, then we'd say theta prime for the reference angle. Uh, here we're using lowercase omega. Um, I wanted to write this one time in general. Okay, there we go. I wrote it. So here are the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Now we need to find all solutions, and that means we take 4 pi over 3 and every angle coterminal with it, plus 2 pi k for any integer k. We've also got 5 pi over 3 and any angle coterminal with it for any k that is an element of the set of integers. These are all solutions. Can I condense this into one list like we did in the last example? And you will find no. No, I cannot. If I ask you to find um, six solutions for this, we should start with k equals zero, this one, and this one, when k equals zero. If k equals one, four pi over three plus two pi. Well, that's six pi over three. That ends up being 10 pi over three. Five pi over three plus 2 pi it means 5 pi over 3 plus, <laughs> I'm trying to write what I was saying, 5 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3 is 11 pi over 3. Uh, now, I don't really need to go any further to show you that these aren't all the same distance apart. These guys are going to be the same distance apart from uh, 4 pi over 3 plus 4 pi, 4 pi over 3 plus 12 pi over 3, uh, that's 16 pi over 3. And 5 pi over 3 plus 12 pi over 3 is going to be 17 pi over 3. right? So you see that these guys are always the same distance apart. And these guys are the same distance apart. But these are not. These are 2 pi apart. These are pi apart. And these are 5 pi over 3 apart. Blah. We cannot condense these into one list. We have to write this as two separate lists. So our next example asks us to find all solutions of tangent of alpha that are uh, that make uh, the equation tangent alpha equals the negative radical 3. Uh, so again, we're going to start by saying in which quadrants is tangent negative? Uh, and the answer is quadrants 2 and 4. So we figure out which angle in the first quadrant gives us radical 3, and then we use that reference angle to come up with angles in the second and fourth quadrants, just like we did for the last example. And it's going to be pi over 3. Tangent of pi over 3 is radical 3. The next thing is, who in the second quadrant has pi over 3 as the reference angle? And what we're going to see is, uh, not theta, but alpha in the second quadrant is going to be 2 pi over 3, and in the fourth quadrant, alpha is going to be 5 pi over 3. So these are the angles in the second and fourth quadrants between 0 and 2 pi radians. So now we answer the question, 
all solutions, 2 pi over 3 plus anything coterminal to it. Or in the fourth quadrant, 5 pi over 3 plus anything coterminal to it. That means for any integer k. And this, this is our set of solutions. You can plug in integers k to find examples of solutions, but this describes all of our solutions. Cool. After the last two examples, this one should be pretty easy. Uh, now, if you don't remember how to find this angle in the second quadrant with this reference angle, we'll do one more of those. In the second quadrant, we have an angle here. The reference angle between the terminal side and the x-axis has to be positive going in this direction and acute. So it can't be this angle. It's not acute. It will be this one. This is the reference angle alpha prime. Now, you'll notice that alpha and alpha prime add up to a straight line. So alpha plus alpha prime equal pi altogether. If you know that alpha is uh, what we're looking for and alpha prime is pi over 3, you can solve for alpha by taking this and, and subtracting alpha prime from both sides. And that's how you're going to get 2 pi over 3. Cool. Uh, we already did 5 pi over 3, and that's all the quadrants, how to do the reference angles in each of those guys. Now yeah, we did it. So let's take one that has a couple more steps to it, something new. Um, when I have an equation like this, 2 sine theta plus 1 equals 0, the first thing I want to do is solve for the trigonometric expression. So that means I've got sine theta times 2 plus 1. We're going to undo each of those things to get sine theta by itself. We're going to undo them in the opposite order they happened. We're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So it says 2 sine theta equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2. So now it says sine of theta equals negative 1 half. And now we're back to where we were in the previous examples. Which quadrants is sine negative in? Quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. Yeah? And which angle makes sine equal to 1 half? Sine of pi over 6. So in the third quadrant, that would be theta equals 7 pi over 6. In the fourth quadrant, that would be theta equals, there you go, 11 pi over 6. And then we say, for all solutions, we need 7 pi over 6 and everything coterminal to it. And 11 pi over 6 and everything coterminal to it. So plus 2 pi k for k in the set of integers, for any integer k. That's what we say. For any k that is an element of the set of integers. Okay, so when we have something like this, we try to solve for the trig expression, and then we do what we did before. For our last example, we're going to add one more step. So like the previous example, we're going to isolate the trig expression. We're going to solve for sine of alpha. Um, and the first thing we have to undo is this minus 3, because it's the last thing that happens. Following the order of operations, you plug alpha into sine, you use the exponent, then you multiply, and then you subtract. PEMDAS, right? The parentheses, and then the exponent, and then multiplication, and then subtraction. So to undo that, we have to undo each of those things in the opposite order. Like putting on your socks and then putting on your shoes. If you want to undo this, you have to start by taking off the shoes. So here, we take off the shoes. 4 sine squared alpha equals 3. Now we're going to divide both sides by 4. This gives us sine squared of alpha equals 3 fourths, which sounds great and all that, but we don't want sine squared of alpha, we want sine of alpha, right? So we have to undo squared. How do we do that? Well, the inverse of squared, uh, if it exists, is square root. To get rid of that squared, we're going to have to take the square root of both sides. And when we take the square root of both sides, we have to say plus or minus, because there are actually two square roots of 25. Two numbers that when I square them I get 25. 5 and negative 5. 
for example, right? So this positive number has two square roots, a positive one and a negative one. Also, we want to talk about how when you take the square root of a fraction, it's going to be the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. And if the square root of the bottom is a nice number, this gets us something nice. What this means to us is that we actually have two things to worry about. Sine of alpha could be radical 3 over 2, or sine of alpha could be negative radical 3 over 2. So we, we say for this one, which quadrants is sine positive in? And for this one, we say which quadrants is sine negative in? Well, that actually covers all four quadrants, doesn't it? Uh, quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, and they're even going to go in order. Quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. In quadrant 1, alpha is going to be pi over 3. In quadrant 2, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. And of course, I want everything coterminal to it. But before we go ahead and say, hey, let's have four different lists that all say plus 2 pi k, let's notice that this and this are pi units apart. Um, so that when you get pi over 3 plus 2 pi, the next one that would have been on this hypothetical list, you would have got, let's say, 7 pi over 3. And then you'd get the next one on that list, pi over 3 plus 4 pi. That's 12 pi over 3. 13 pi over 3 altogether. And now let's take a look at these guys. 4 pi over 3. And 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi. Well, it's still 6 pi over 3, so that's 10 pi over 3. And 4 pi over 3 plus 4 pi going around one more time. That's going to be 4 pi over 3 plus 12 pi over 3. That's 16 pi over 3. You should notice that taking everything from this list and this list, as we keep adding 2 pi to this and 2 pi to this, and shuffling them up in order, that these are 3 pi over 3. That is exactly pi. That the distance between these is 3 pi over 3. Again, pi. 3 pi over 3. 3 pi over 3. 3 pi over 3. So I don't actually need four separate lists. I don't. Since the same thing happens with these two, which you'll notice are already pi over 3, uh, 3 pi over 3 units apart, uh, I actually need just two lists. Pi over 3 plus 1 pi k, or 2 pi over 3 plus 1 pi k. You should also notice that while these are 3 pi over 3 units apart, or pi units apart, and so are these, the distance between these guys is 1 pi over 3, and the distance between these guys is 2 pi over 3. I cannot combine all of these into one list. I will have to have at least the two lists. So there's that. We can use this same trick back in our previous tangent example. Notice that these guys are 3 pi over 3, or exactly pi units apart. So I actually don't need two lists for this problem either. 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, and then this will be 8 pi over 3, and then this will be 11 pi over 3, and then this will be 14 pi over 3, and 17 pi over 3. And every time we're going to switch from one list to the other, or, like we said, call this 2 pi over 3 plus 1 pi k. This makes a lot of sense because the period of tangent is not actually 2 pi. Tangent repeats itself after pi units. It has a different period than sine and cosine. And that is going to say exactly what you would expect for a, a function whose period is not 2 pi but 1 pi. There we go. So that brings our first foray into trig equations to a close. Join us next time when we do more stuff with trig equations. Our constellation for the day is Aries. And this has been a Badger Bear production of the wonderful world of math.